So, uh, moments with Murph. We're going to talk about the types of women to avoid. Talk about men before. Now we're going to talk about women because we are always neutral. So we got to see both sides of things. So let's start with the narcissist. Oh my goodness. They are the ones who, you know, they keep to themselves a lot. They don't like people in a lot of senses. They don't like to be around people. They don't want to be bothered quite frequently. So guess what? They don't want you to be around people. That is so annoying. <clears throat> it's like, just because you don't like to be around people, just because you don't have friends, doesn't mean that I must be the same way. But that's what they do. They keep people away from you. They keep you away from people. So it's like, either you are with them, or when you're with others, it's going to be chaos. You're going to get a lot of text messages. You're going to get a lot of phone calls. You're going to get a lot of, you know... I was going to say DMs. <laughs> They're going to communicate with you in numerous of ways. Like, have you ever been told on, this is what I call very immature. I've actually been told on where I was hanging out with one of my friends. I'm in class, so we're classmates. <laughs> and we sit near each other. Like, well, they're, they're, they sit next to me. So sometimes in class, like, I sit off in like a decent area in the front or off to the side in the front with like two or three other students. So both of these students were my friends. Of course, both were female. Oh, well. So I get a text <laughs> and it's in the middle of class, like, why are you sitting with such and such? And I'm like, hi, what's your... And I'm looking around. I'm like, who told on me? Like, I'm looking through. I'm like, who isn't my friend or who would have something to say or who posted something? Because now this, this is an issue. And oddly enough, I never found out who it was. <laughs> that That's irritating. But that wasn't the first time. Another time, too, I was in the hallway walking with another group of friends. Again, these friends have been my friends for years, but somehow it was an issue with my current. So, again, I get a text <laughs> asking why am I walking the halls with such and such going to the cafeteria. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So this one's a little hard to suspect because I'm like, you know, there's hundreds of students in the hallways in high school. So I, I couldn't put a thumb on who it might have been. I had an idea, but I didn't under, I didn't think when that um, when that female would have seen me in the hallway. But apparently she did because she told somebody. And guess what? I got a text. Those are the ones that are really irritating. And they're the ones who are always constantly asking questions and making false accusations. You don't want to be around it. You don't want to be surrounded with that. You don't want to waste your time with that. <clears throat> because who wants to be just commonly questioned about where you at? What you doing? Where you going? Like, that is so annoying. Like, who are you with? Why, why can't I live my life and tell you about it afterwards? Like, why do you have to know what's going on in the midst of it? Because you're questioning it. Like, I don't think anybody honestly like, wants to be questioned quite often. So if you got a female who's commonly questioning things, and especially if y'all are in that early stage where, like, you're still kind of figure out if you want her to be your girlfriend and she's pulling like, you know, your phone to you because she's seen text messages by one of your other friends. Or maybe she's seen you hanging out with somebody and she wants to know who that person is. Like there, there are some issues with that and which that happened in her past. So she's kind of like kind of testy. So she's real questionable. But you if you don't like that, you don't really want that to drag on you. So that's something to avoid. And you can, again, you can always tell by the way that they ask their questions, especially if they ask questions as, as if they know the answer to it, you want to avoid those. I hate accusations because, like, if you want to know something, like, don't assume. Ask a question. But, because y'all don't think I'm, y'all going to say I'm contradicting myself. No. Ask a question as if you don't know you're just trying to find information. Don't question me because you just want to make a point to yourself that you're correct because nine times out of ten you're probably wrong but again you got all these assumptions all these thoughts in your mind and now we're going back and forth so the narcissist definitely one to avoid another one <laughs> obsessed with their ex now me personally i haven't had to deal with this <gasps> have i no not really um maybe maybe one but I, I don't really count us as in a relationship like she was she was kind of like a bridge like 
where you get out of one relationship, so you kind of like branch to the next person who was showing like a decent, you know, decent opportunity of commitment. But again, no, because like that's the uh, it's obvious. Like if a lot of things that she talks about, she's kind of reminiscing about him. Uh, you want to get a little highlighter and put that in moments with her. <laughs> so if she's constantly, you know, reminiscing about the stuff, if she compares things that you do or don't do to what he did, that means he's still on her mind. So that's going to, you know, make you a little iffy. If they're still in contact, <gasps> red flag, like super red flag, NFL, challenge it. You need to be aware of that. I don't care what she says, especially if you can tell by the way that she talks that they were in love or they were together for like years. So it's kind of hard to just sweep that under the carpet. Red flag, like super red flag about to walk out type because there's a good chance that, you know, there's going to be an issue there. And I don't know how many of y'all seen the show, The Game, but like, you know, Tasha... She had her man that she wanted to be with, but then her ex was always around. And that couldn't allow her to move forth. So, if she's constantly in contact with her ex, I don't care if she says they're friends. You don't care if she says they're friends because he's still around. So, maybe they can possibly sort of, kind of, eh, ish, be friends. But 9 times out of 10, no. Because, again... He was there before you, so he knows way more about her than you do. And they've been through way more things in life than y'all have. So he has a super advantage. Now, yes, they may have ended, and even if they ended on bad terms, there's a lot of ties and emotions you know, tied up with that. So, if you think that she is with him, then guess what? Then she probably is. Even though, <laughs> God, no, I'm getting cussed out about that. Even though she may actually be with him, but it's going to bother you. You know, it's going to be on your mental. You don't want to be, you know, at work thinking about, oh, my gosh, is, is she with him? Oh, is she talking to him? Is she texting him? Are they hanging out? You know, is he trying to get her back? Is she going to leave me? You see how irritated that is? I just got irritated just thinking about, thinking about people be thinking about that. Like, that's something you don't want to think about. So if you believe that she is, then guess what? Just... Say, oh my gosh, she is, and just move on. Because you're going to run yourself crazy. And I mean crazy. If you're trying to figure out, you know, if she is, and how you're going to catch her in the act. Don't waste your time. Either ask her, again, we don't like accusations, we don't like assumptions. Ask her and move on with it. However. Actually, not however. If you ask her, and she's kind of beating around the bush, move on. If you tell her how you feel and she kind of like brushes it off like, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's nothing. Move on. Because, again, he has length on you. So he kind of has strength on you. And when he has both, it's kind of hard for you to kind of leverage yourself to show why he shouldn't be in the picture. So, again, like if you feel strongly about some him and about that situation, bring it up to her. Be concrete with her. And if you feel like you haven't gotten anywhere or you feel like that it's not going to put you in the right area future-wise, move on. Don't waste your time because you won't get that back. So the other type of female you want to avoid is the anchor. Yes, these are the ones that you really feel like it's cause they're, they're kind of like just dragging you. Like you're, You feel like you're dragging them. So these are the ones that definitely take all of your time for starters. And trust me, I am the one who loves his time. So if I'm doing something like it, it must be beneficial. And this is why I kind of hardly watch movies because like, I feel like when I'm, you know, very stable that I'm not getting something accomplished. And that's just me. So I love movies, but it's hard for me to really watch them unless like I have something to do in the midst. Or if you catch me watching a movie that I already saw, especially if it's an action movie, I'm going only to the action scenes. So it just be like, skip, skip, skip. That's what happens. And with this one, this is the one that always, again, takes your time. So they want to be around you, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, when you have other things to do, and you know that you do, but they try to put them in front of those tasks, no. 
because she's going to be the one to really hold you back because when you keep giving somebody your time and you're not fulfilling it with things that are really going to benefit you that can hopefully or later on and hopefully benefit them as well then guess what you're not really going to move somewhere so it's like in the women's podcast if you're on level five and you feel like you've been on level five forever and you're trying to get to seven and you need some time to get to seven but she takes it all guess what you're gonna be on level five with her or if she's somehow progressing and you're still on level five then guess what now you're behind and you're not going to move ahead because she's ahead of you and she's taking your time. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. She's also the one that takes your money, you know. She always wants to go out, whether it's on a trip, whether it's on a date. There's nothing wrong with these things. Do not get that twisted. Because I love me a good trip. I love me a good date. But you guys can't do it frequently. Because, look, when she takes your time and your money, now you've got two L's under your belt. And a lot of times... The money is taking your time, <laughs> in a sense. So, again, this is the one who wants to do a lot of things. And sometimes she doesn't want to contribute, you know, especially for us males that really believe and, you know, don't worry about it, I got it, you know, because that's how a lot of us, take it back, that's how some of us was raised, where it's like, we are the men, so we do things for our women, you know, unconditionally. But don't let her take that to her advantage because some of them will. And when she constantly, you know, wants to go shopping with no credit card and she constantly want to go out to eat with no wallet and she constantly wants to go on trips again with no cash. But somehow all these things are going to accomplish. Guess what? It's because of you. You are her fun bank and ATM. Do not get used. So, you also want to avoid the anchor because they are sometimes non-listeners. These are the ones that you cannot communicate with, no matter how hard you try. Because I guarantee you, a lot of times, like, you try to get into it, you know, you try to talk about a topic, but she doesn't want to talk about it. And the reason why non-communication is an anchor is because it's not allowing you to grow. So, if you can't talk, you can't figure out what the issues is. So, in a sense, you're kind of just sitting there. But then when you got other problems building on top of it, now you're going lower and lower because you're not you're not getting out the hole because she doesn't want to communicate with you. Or if she's the one who wants to communicate all of your issues, but she doesn't want to talk about her issues, again, non-listener. She wants to talk at you, not talk with you. And guess what? You're not getting anywhere. You're kind of, again, wasting your time. Just for a simple fact is you're not going to be able to, you know, grow from that. She's literally kind of telling you, like, you're the issue and that, you are the, um, need to get together. And a lot of times in this instances, they believe that their wants are more important than your needs. Crown goes, ooh. Because, like, <laughs> like literally, like the things that she wants to do in life, she tries to put that and prioritize that over the things that you need to do in life. So let's say you need to find another source of income, right? You want to get ahead. You know, you're trying to get a house. Trying to get from... You know, paying rent, whatever, whatever. But she wants to go on a trip or she wants you to be around more. But you cannot allocate that because being around more, what she wants, means that you aren't able to create your business or create, you know, another source of income or even take up more hours at work that you need to get ahead. And that's a great issue and that's one of the things that you you know you want to avoid because we're not letting you really grow just because what they want and how they're trying to be is before you no which you know it's taking a good lead into the next of the non-supporter and this is honestly the big one like especially for a lot of us males who you know we have a lot of aspirations you know we have a lot of goals in life and again, this is something you and her should have spoke about way early in a relationship. So she knows exactly what you're trying to do. Now, if she does not know exactly what you're trying to do, even if some things change, you know, life changes, we alter a little bit. But if she doesn't have a great idea, then guess what? That is your fault. Because you did not effectively communicate with her what you're trying to accomplish in your lifespan. But back to avoiding her. <laughs> when she can't be there for you, with in your goals you want to immediately get rid of her 
for a simple fact is she's not being considerate. You're trying to do something that's going to better you and in a sense, better y'all because, you know, it, it may open up opportunity for you to make more money, which allows y'all to do more things or to keep the same amount of money that you have, but open up more free time. So let's say you're not working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week to make the same, to make 60 grand, let's say 60 grand for easy numbers. But now you can only work, you only gotta work 20 hours per week to make the same 60 grand. But she doesn't wanna support that. You, oh, you're opening time, you didn't open up money, but you opened up time. But now you got more time to earn more money. So in a sense, you did. But she's not supporting that because A, she don't believe in it or she doesn't want to believe in it. Just for some effect is that some people just really don't know how to encourage and motivate. And if she's not there to help you, a lot a lot of people actually need that motivation. And it's actually a proven fact that motivation and you know good encouragement drives people to do way better. And like can you honestly imagine talking to the person that you call your spouse, the one that you want to be around consistently and consecutively, always telling you that you're not gonna be able to do something, or is oh well if you can, you know, I hope so, but I don't know how it's gonna work. Who wants to hear that? I don't think if any of us are striving to a goal that we want to hear that. And guess what? You don't want to hear that. So you know what you're going to do? You're going to avoid her. You're going to avoid her immediately. Like, if you come out early with the, you know, I want to do this. And she says, mm, I don't know about that. Then you don't cut her off right there. You talk about it. Because maybe your idea is to make automatic, you know, sock warmers. Uh... I ain't gonna fake. I just kind of like, um, really? Is that? Okay. I ain't gonna fake. Somebody around the world probably got rich off of that, you know? People really got rich off of taking a robe and turning it around. We call that a Snuggie. And guess what? Million dollar idea. So, again, this is something you talk out with her. You know, you give her the idea. But if you're in full effect, full motion, like you know that your idea is gonna work, especially if it's something proven, just as, you know, selling some simple things on, you know, Facebook Marketplace. Let's just say you sell clothes or you sell cars, you know, something simple, something that's been proven. You are in full effect. You didn't give her some numbers, even if she don't understand them, but she's just not with it. She's just like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, maybe you should do something else or maybe you should spend more time with me. Guess what? You avoid her. Why? Because she's not helping you be productive she's not motivating she's not encouraging you like we need that women need that but it's like a lot of times for men our women are our best friends they are the ones that we talk to the most that we care for the most you know probably besides our mothers <laughs> but those are the ones that we really tend on so like when you're let's just say like you're a right leg you know you, you can't depend on her. You can't lean on her because she's not, she's not really with it. Like, as soon as you try to lean on that right leg to get some stability, like, it's already kicked up. So, guess what? You fall over because that person who's, like, your crutch, who's really going to help you up, is not there for you. And if you can't get that, then why is she there? That's when you move on. Mm -hmm. And you move on to the next person who's going to help you grow as an individual. And that's why the non-supporter is the biggest one you want to avoid so to recap the narcissist the one who doesn't have too many friends so she doesn't want you to have any friends you avoid the one that's obsessed with her ex she's always talking about him she reminisces about him a lot and you feel like that's not going to get you anywhere so guess what you avoid them because yes he's still around <laughs> the anchor who needs extra weight unless you're trying to get stronger? In, in a sense, I mean, she might make you stronger because she's holding you back, but no. <laughs> in the game of life, you're going to incur obstacles all the way. And you don't need an obstacle or an anchor, in a sense, that you're inflicting on yourself. Who needs self-inflicted wounds? You don't want to kick yourself when you're down. So why have somebody else with you often who's going to do it to you? Avoid the anchor. And ultimately, we're going to avoid the non-supporter. Because if they're not there to help motivate you, help encourage you, maybe point out some factors because sometimes there are flaws in our plans. 
and that's what you talk about. But if they're overall just not going to be there for you, then you cannot be there for them. And we're going to leave it at that.